At the onset of the pandemic and under strict lockdown, I set up a studio at home. Historically, much of my work throws satirical stones at the kind of perceived ills in society. And although I found some obvious satisfaction in throwing these vitriolic bulbs at society's fault lines, I've only recently worked out that the process of making in itself is therapeutic for me and central. This seems to be at the heart of my practice. I think I'm a slow learner. I just need to keep busy, I suppose. Where before my animal sculptures might symbolically mock predators, policemen, politicians, oligarchs and the corrupted, I felt impelled to look closer to home for my subject matter. This seemed obvious to me. My interest in subjects have been shifting recently, from exposing perpetrators to presenting people. I've been wanting to transition from an accusatory position to one that's more compassionate and possibly empathetic. Not exclusively though, I think I still remain a stone thrower at heart. I've been researching the small Japanese Natsuka sculptures for a while. These are traditionally used as kimono fasteners and are deliciously refined and restrained mini sculptures. They are carved in stone, wood and ivory. Some are cast in metal and they often depict animals. In these inquiries I came across the Japanese tradition of placing a two-scale wooden sculpture of a rabbit looking heavenwards, placed outside houses and businesses as charms that might bring prosperity, good luck and fertility. Just what I needed. This seemed like a good place to kick off my lockdown therapy. So I started by making small symbolic portraits of my family. The four of us at home depicted as animals. My partner, myself and our two young boys. So now loves rabbits. Lo is wise beyond his years and is represented as an owl. Kai is a mischievous monkey, a prankster that keeps us on our toes. All three are looking to the heavens for guidance or as witnesses to an impending calamity. I hold my hands looking down anxiously as a monkey and a father, in hope and in fear. These first four seem to resonate effectively, so I extended the series describing the intimacy and anxiety of isolation and of social separation that has been a universally shared experience and somehow paradoxically binds humanity together, hopefully. <laughs>